الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علیہ علی و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد احب تف اللہ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ سے کتاب الکریم اتمرون الناس بالبر و تنسون انفسکم و انتم تتلون الكتاب افلا تعقلون و سعین و بصبر و صلاح و انہا لکبیرت الا علی خاشئین اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ سے کتاب الکریم اتمرون الناس بالبر Do you call the people to piety? And then you forget yourselves. So this Allah was addressing the Yahud that they, some of them would call to the Torah and they would forget themselves, meaning they would give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would call to the law that they were to abide by, but yet they themselves would not practice. So this is the lack of practicing what you preach. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that this is one of the major sins. أَتَأْمَرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرْ وَتَنْسَوْنَ إِنْفُسُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, are you calling the people to bitter, to righteousness or piety? And you're forgetting yourselves. And you read the book. You know, so you're reading the book. You know the book. You understand the book. You're preaching with the book. Do you have an intellect? So Allah Ta'ala questions. Uh, he gives this question, do you have an intellect letting us know that this is something mithmum, this is something sinful, that you actually preach and you don't practice? That you're calling, you're making da'wah to the book and the sunnah through your words, but not really through your actions. You're forbidding, you're, you're commanding the good and you're forbidding the evil. You're calling the people to do good deeds and you're forbidding them from doing sin, but yet you are not commanding yourself with good, instead you're commanding yourself with bad and doing bad. وَإِيَّاذٍ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ هَذَا May Allah protect us and you from that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِصَبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ So uh, before that, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ You know, Allah is asked, do you think? Are you a thinking person? Because letting us know that a thinking person, a thinking person is one who's going to practice, of course, what they preach and practice because they believe and they know that they are commanded with the good and they are forbidden from the evil and they know the reward of doing the good. And they know the reward of leaving the evil. And they know, know the reward of, come, of forbidding the evil as well. And they know the sin of indulging in the evil. So this Allah Ta'ala is talking about Ahl Kitab, talking about the Yahud specifically, as the Mufassirin mentioned. And along with that, this is a lesson for us. Of course, this is Am, this is general. It isn't just that they have to follow this. That, w that it's okay for us to, to, to preach and not practice la. But it's very important, and this is a reminder for anybody, for all of us as Muslims, but especially those people who are calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those du'at, uh, those scholars, and those people who have something of knowledge or they're, they're, they're propagators of the religion and faith, that they have to practice. Because this is where a lot of us go, uh, go astray and have shortcomings, and that we don't practice what we preach. And so we don't set the example. And we are often in the major sins, but yet we're preaching in a major way. So it's very important that we, we practice that. And then Allah uh, commands, and we know when it's in the imperative form, when Allah is commanding, that that shows that the origin of that command is that it's an obligation. That it's something you must do. So Allah Taala says, "Wasta'inu bi sabri wa salah," and 
uh, you know, seek help by being patient and prayer. That shows us the importance of the Salat as well, that we have to use the prayer. Our prayer, if we're actually practicing, it should help us avoid some of the munkarat, and it gains the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it gains the reward of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, and that it should be a means of finding comfort and raha in your lives, that you should find comfort and, and humbleness, and you should see some of the fruits in your daily lives as well. It's not just simply in the masjid you feel comfortable and then you go out and you do the most foulest of sins, that, but rather it should, if you're avoiding sin and you're practicing that prayer and using that prayer and benefiting from that prayer, it's going to actually bring other light in your lives. So this is imperative that we, we do that, that we wasta'inu bi sabri wa salat, seek help and support through patience and prayer. So use your prayer to seek help from those things that are outside the masjid that are calling you to the haram, calling you to your destruction, calling you to humiliation. Seek refuge in the masjid, seek refuge in your prayer from those things. Wasta'inu bi sabri wa salat. You know, with it, and be patient. And some of the types of uh, of patience, there's sabr ala ta'atillah, sabr ala ma'asiyatillah, okay? Sub, that there's patience in being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing His commandments, you know? So, for example, prayer. Prayer takes patience. It's not easy uh, to establish necessarily those five daily prayers. You could be doing all kind of other activities, especially if you're in, you're a Muslim minority and you work and you have this responsibility and this responsibility, you have to break away from those to take time to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that takes some ijtihad, that takes some struggle, you know. وَاسْتَعِينُ بِصَبَرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ So you have to use, you have to come to prayer and that's a patience in ta'atillah. That's the point, it's a patience in obedience to Allah. And then as we said, patience وَصَبَرَ عَلَى مَعْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ You know, there's, there's also the patience with regards to being uh, disobedient to Allah, being patient that you, patient by avoiding those uh, prohibitions, that you, some things they're in accordance with your desires. You wanna smoke something, you wanna drink something, you wanna touch something, you wanna get involved in something, but you're patient and you withhold yourselves. You struggle and you put those sins aside in order that you are those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِسَبَرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ That you are one of those who practices that, that you are patient and you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you seek His assistance uh, through patience and prayer. And that also shows us that patience and prayer are acts of ibadah. That sabr is a type of ibadah, it's a type of worship. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded with it, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِسَبَرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be uh, seek refuge. How do you seek refuge? How do you seek this help? How do you seek this assistance? Be sabri wa salat by being patient and prayer, letting us know that patience and prayer are types of ibadah that pleases Allah subhanahu wa taala and Allah tabarak wa taala commanded it. Wa sa'inu bi sabri wa salat wa inna hala kabiratun illa al khashin. And verily, this is uh, this is something which is is major. You know, there's some mushakka, there's some difficulty in doing this. Illa al khashin, except for those who fear Allah. Subhanallah, look at this. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguishes between the uh, ahl al khushu', the khashi'in, and then the, the average person, maybe the average Muslim or the average, the average people, but especially the average Muslim. That yes, they're Muslim, walhamdulillah, but yet they, they're not la yasta'inu bi sabri wa la salah. You know, maybe they're not seeking that true, uh, you know, they're not patient. As we mentioned, patience in sin, patient with, with avoiding sin, and patient with doing the, the obligatory deeds. You know, maybe they miss some of their obligations, and maybe they involve themselves in some sins. So they're not showing that patience. They're not seeking the support and the, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being patient and doing those acts of worship that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسَعِينُ بِسَبْرِ وَصَلَاةٍ عَلَىٰ خَاشِينَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ خَاشِينَ And verily, that's something difficult except for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have taqwa, those who, 
who fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have khawf really from the punishment of Allah wa ta'ala that, that it isn't just something that they read about or they never reflect on, but they really reflect that there's a Jahannam and I could go in there and I could be punished. They fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Illa al khashi'een. Those are the khashi'een. But most of us, we, we don't reflect on Jahannam uh, wala Jannah. So we don't think about the paradise. We don't think about the hair file. We don't think about our punishment. Rather, we go about through our lives and, you know, we do some acts of ibadah and we do some sins, maybe some major sins, and we just keep on pushing through life and that's how our lives are. But the khashi'een, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and those who are promised the success and those who distinguish themselves by, the, by being patient and seeking help uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being patient and by, and by perfecting the prayer. Because it's not just praying. Of course you have to pray if you're a Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu said that man tarqa salat faqad kafara Whoever leaves the prayer is disbelief. So some of the ulama, they mention that the one who doesn't pray is a disbeliever. The one who doesn't pray is a disbeliever. Khalas, he's not even in the fold of Islam. If he's married, then you know, there's all kind of, you know, he's married to a Muslim, and then, then he's going to be separated from her. All these kind of uh, ahkam that are related to that if a person is not praying. So that's a very serious offense, grievous to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we're not even talking about those. We're talking about the ones who do pray, but they're careless in their prayer. They're not giving their prayer its haq. They're not really having khushu and humility. They're busy with the outside. You know, they're on a different level of iman and a different level uh, with regards to their prayer. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the bad. Bless us to be of the khashi'een. Bless us with tawfiq to come closer to him. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.